I want to give credit to the Hello and Welcome podcast for inspiring this, to the Numbers on the Board podcast for inspiring this. A lot of people ranking the last decade of NBA Finals. Just coming off this one we had, which lacked juice. Did lack juice. Right? It did. Congrats to the Celtics. Congrats to all the Beantown boys. Dominant team. Honestly, dominant victory. We didn't have a lot of close games in the finals, though. There weren't a ton of memorable moments. No. And so I had a lot of people going like, oh, that was sort of, that fell flat. But where does it rank amongst the last, let's say, decade again of NBA Finals? So let's rank them. So that's what we're doing here. I've got the list. I'll chuck it to you, Taz. We'll move quickly through them each. Uh, and then at the end, you can sort of be like, ah, I think you got that one too high, that one too low, and get your oh, perspective. At the end, I ain't waiting. Okay, I ain't okay, waiting. you I... chime in here. All right, so ranking the last 10 NBA Finals, uh, and we'll start at number 10, work our way up to the number one. And again, I'm not trying to like take into account like the actual championship team. I'm just like looking at it from an entertainment perspective. Okay. How entertaining, how memorable were those finals, okay, mm-hmm. compared to the other ones? Uh, so at number 10 on my list, I have the Warriors over the Cavs in 2017. That's the five-game series. This is a series you've brought up a couple times when we were talking uh, about the gentleman sweep that happened here in this finals, because that's what happened in this one. Yep. The Warriors crushed the Cavs uh, in their barn in games one and two. The only real drama <laughs> from this series, despite it going five in, in a gentleman sweep, was Kevin Durant hitting that deep three at the end of game three. Yep. That was the close game of this otherwise absolutely ass-kicking mm-hmm. from the from the Warriors, despite the one game where the Cavs, and this is the one you kept bringing up, hit 24 threes in game four yeah. to just extend the series. They couldn't miss that game. I think that's a more memorable game four than the Mavs game four. <laughs> Not that it guess, really matters. Yeah. But I do think that this game had moments at the end of a game, like big moments. Moment. That- Moment ish, <laughs> and it yeah. Well, there was a little bit of drama because here in this particular series, the way we just lived, it was two zero, and then it was three zero. Pretty freaking easy. There well, wasn't there wasn't a close moment right at the end of the series like we got in Cleveland after Golden State won those first two. Cleveland gets their first home game. And you think okay, maybe they can win one. They are up with forty five seconds they left. They were. They were. When Kevin Durant grabs that rebound, goes up the floor and hits that three to put Golden State up in the eyes of LeBron James for his first championship. And then in game five, actually, he ended the game as well with a big shot. Now, it, yeah, it, the, Cavs, right. the Cavs weren't up like they were in game three. But you got a dramatic moment there where the one team could win a game. The Mavs series, I think we're just living in the moment. What are you going to remember? Yeah, sure. as a t- there so you would have put close... that 10. You would have put that dead last Celtics I, over the, over I, the uh, I would. Mavericks. Because there wasn't, there wasn't a memorable Luka moment, really. No. I know there's Jalen Brown dunks in game one and <laughs> yeah. game three. They're... they're he was the MVP. Those are the things you're going to remember. But uh, you will remember that Kevin Durant moment. So to bring up the ball and just fire away. The problem with this finals, it was like inevitable that they were going to... They added Kevin Durant to a 73-win team. Yeah. And yeah, it was a rematch. You had that juice going into it, but then they just dominated them. And in the in the series clinching least, game, yeah. Curry 34, finals MVP Durant 39, Iguodala had 20 off the bench, and... They scored 129 points, and it was... I mean, there's similarities to this series. Absolutely. That we just had. There really are, how I, it went. It just seemed like Cleveland was going to win a game. I mean, at home, they're up two points with 45 seconds left. Yeah. And Kevin Durant comes and hits that shot. The Mavs didn't have that. Well, the Mavs were close in Game 3. That was the one where we were like... They, they, they should have had that one. Yeah. That was the game where the Celtics couldn't shoot. Yeah. <laughs> and it was theirs. That was the one. Yeah, it just it, it was theirs to win. It just didn't – it wasn't close in the fourth, really. No. I mean, that's the thing. There wasn't anything late. So, I, okay. yeah, I'm being a little biased. And I'm just like, what moment are we going to remember from the Luka Kyrie handling the ball <sighs> like you would remember for Kevin Durant? Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, that, so there's that that's part fair. Of it. Okay. Well, then number nine. I mean, there's no surprise here. I do have Celtics over Mavericks. Okay. The the 2024 series that we just had. Again, similarities. Uh, there was it, it just it, it lacked oomph. I know our it group did. chats. A lot of people are like, ugh, that's it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there wasn't like a lot of obviously close games or mm-hmm. really all that memorable moments. That's the truth. Again, this is not to diss the Celtics. They were that dominant of team all year long, and then rolled through the postseason. 
and uh, took care of business in five. And at least the Mavs got one to give us a game five. But uh, okay, so you you would flip flop. I those, would flip, like you but, said. There was uh, the game three was fine. It was should have been the Mavs game. Yes. That should have been their yes. game. And it was a seven-point loss, so it's not like it was a blow-up by any means. Yeah. So there was a couple seven-point wins for the Boston Celtics in games two and three, but games two was just that monstrous lead yep. that they were able to shrink down towards the end. Doesn't didn't feel all that right. Yeah, I think I would take the Warriors one, even though you're right. I mean, it was a spanking. It was spanking, yeah. yeah. All right, number eight on the list, uh, Nuggets over Heat. 2023 NBA Finals. Uh, yeah. Not not this season, obviously, but the year before. That was a five-game uh, series as well. Nuggets beat them. They won their first championship in franchise history. I think that gives it a little something, right? Uh, 47 seasons in the NBA. Mm-hmm. So Denver sort of breaks through and wins it. Yeah. But when you, like, I don't know, what's the most memorable <laughs> game or moment or whatever from the Nuggets sort of kicking the Heat's ass? And, and the Heat has, like, the obviously the eight seed getting all the way there. I think it's after game two, the Miami Heat won that game. Kyle Lowry just showered or maybe didn't shower. I'm not sure. He was in a towel and he was in the arena and he was walking up the stairs to get interviewed. A man in a towel in a stadium in an arena? That's the most memorable moment for me. Okay, that's the a weird one. game two was the uh, Duncan Robinson game. Yeah. That's the one where he caught fire late. That's when Eric Spolster changed the lineup and said, Caleb Martin, no, sir. Right. Kevin Love, we need some right. height here because the Nuggets were just dunking all over them in game one. And then the Heat took game two, and everybody wondered, the Heat going to win this series? Yeah, yeah, that's right. So it is different. It is good there because it was 1-1. It was. Game three had Jokic and Murray becoming the first pair of teammates in NBA history to each record a 30-point triple-double. Yeah, I mean, That's pretty iconic. Jamal Murray is memorable from this series. Yep, yep. And uh, game four was the Aaron Gordon takeover game. Basically, and then game five was a low scoring. It was ugly. Slugfest. Miami shot 34% from the field and had run out of gas in Denver. You know, Jokic had a good line in the end, especially the box score, but uh, yeah. it just like, just sort of squeezed the life out of them as being the better team. You were right. Them winning their first championship is big. Just yeah. Nic- yeah, yeah. Nikola Jokic winning his first championship and, and Jamal being side by side with them and those other players. And that's why I, I do regret. Uh, not that I regret ranking the Celtics 10, but that's why I think that Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown winning their first title is significant. Well, it might, it might gain more significance if, if the Celtics repeat or the dynasty builds. Yeah, yeah. and it's a little different. But yeah, absolutely. Right now in the moment, it just like, again, that that's almost adding too much to it. It's like, was it entertaining? <laughs> like, was it a really good finals? And we're, and it and we're wasn't. days sorry, after and we, and we don't remember oh my many God, moments. People are already moved on. Oh, yeah. It was like it barely happened. It, and then the game five was a spanking. It was, every single game felt like a spanking, yeah. although the Mavs did shrink it a little bit. Luca was tired. Okay, number seven on the list. It's a sweep. And I've got seventh. Huh. But here's why. This okay. is the Warriors over the Cavs in 2018. At least we had game one. At least we had that, right? That's the overtime game. That's maybe LeBron's greatest playoff performance ever. 51 points, 19 and 32 shooting, eight boards, eight assists trying to drag this team to that game one upset over those Warriors. But what happens? J.R. Smith, baby. Mm. J.R. Smith. Well, actually, George Hill a little bit, too. Let's not forget Absolutely. him. Absolutely. Cleveland was within one point in the final possession. LeBron, LeBron found uh, wide open George Hill underneath the basket. Clay Thompson wisely fouls him. Uh, Hill goes to the line. Again, they're down 107-106. He makes the first free throw. He misses the second free throw, leaves it short. And then Jr. has the ball, and Jr. panics a little bit and is a little, a little flustered. And we got the meme, so at least we got the meme. What are you doing, Jr.? And then they got, they got crushing overtime. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then it was sort of a blowout from the rest of the series. It, like it was one of those weird ones. Like game one, it's like, oh, they didn't grab it. That's probably it. And it yeah. sort of like panned out that way. That's why I have in seventh though, because of that reason. Game uh, one. Yeah, <laughs> that's the one you got to win for sure. <laughs> and George Hill. Uh... He gets by not being remembered oh, all that much. Yeah, for sure. Because he hit that first one and then missed the second one. And when you think back, it's amazing that J.R. Smith didn't know what he was doing because it was a free throw. Like, there was so much time to talk about it, yeah, too. Yeah. If we miss right, a free right, throw, right. Um, don't dribble the ball, dude. <laughs> <laughs> don't do what you did. Yeah. Really weird that he, th- he just had such a brain fart where he yeah. just thought, we're just going to kill the clock. 
So, yeah, there's that. And obviously, <laughs> yeah, LeBron had a monster game in that Jesus. one. And things went bad in games two, three, and four. Yep. But, yeah, I think it's totally fine. You're okay where I have it one. roughly? Okay. Yeah, and plus, I know people don't really remember a lot about Durant's Warriors run. I would say, look, the casual fan, will he remember immediately? Yeah, Durant came and they won two in a row. Like, this is a second row, second championship for him. I know it doesn't yeah. matter to anybody. <laughs> to uh, some people, he's never won a championship. Right, exactly. <laughs> uh, so it was, yeah, I but, understand. I understand that. Um, and this was the last finals for those two teams together, which you know basically took up that decade. It was all. It was, all it was those. It was really two teams. wild going through this, going, "Oh my god, we really did have Warriors Cavs so many times." Yeah. Uh, and it's like now we're in this parody stage of all these new teams winning championships and, and even new teams being in the finals. Like, wh- I assume at one one day we'll get back to that. You know, there'll be two elite squads right. in both conferences always meeting up. It'll happen again, but like it feels so unlikely right now where we are just with how the league and the second aprons and how you can build teams and i don't know maybe and then maybe expansion coming as well and and that whole wrinkle okay number six on the list lakers overheat 2020 so six game series i struggled where to put this one because Mm -hmm. this is the uh the covid finals this is the the finals played in late september (laughs) early october (laughs) which is really weird this is the disney bubble so no fan so like that I don't know. Does that make it more memorable? Does it knock it down a peg for you? Uh, again, it's a tough one. Lakers won the first two games in fairly dominant fashion. You had just recently talked about Anthony Davis. He was the MVP front runner uh, through the first couple games, which was true, but LeBron went on to get another finals MVP. Um, I, I think I have it where it is because, and maybe I had forgotten about this, but in looking into it, I forget how many Heat players got injured. <laughs> in game one, Jimmy Butler twists twists his left ankle uh, before the end of the first half. He remained in the game, and, and you know, he he went on to deliver some historic performances and memes throughout the series there in the bubble. But you had Goran Dragic not playing in the second half, foot injury. He would not return until Game Six off the bench. Like they're like, you know, can you give us anything? Yeah, they needed uh, it. desperate. So yeah. he didn't play basically the entire series. And Bam out of bio, I'd forgotten about this. He exited in the third quarter of that game with a shoulder injury. He missed two games, you know, one which they did win because Jimmy Butler was going for a 40-plus point triple-double in game three. But, you know, the injuries knocked it down, and I, I don't know. The bubble part of it sort of hurts it a bit. But where, where do you think you would have it? Somewhere in the middle here like I do? Uh, yeah, I think so. To have Jimmy Butler have a 40-point game in game number yeah, three. Yeah, Jimmy saves it. Yes, it's all You Jimmy. almost think of Jimmy more. Absolutely. <laughs> and the Heat getting there and you do. putting up a fight. Yeah. You do. And I don't really care that it's... A, a, a bubble win. For, I know some people just don't want to see that, see that the Lakers won and it doesn't mean enough because it was in the bubble and they didn't have to travel or right, whatever. But right. the Jimmy Butler factor is huge. The 40 point game and then hanging over the, the table oh, yeah. where he's exhausted. Yeah. That 40 point game was awesome. And winning two games, despite all those injuries, Goran Dragic was very, very good and very important for I that know, team. Exactly. And Tyler Hero was really good in, Replacing him in yeah. a way, in a way for the, just just to have another guard. Yeah. Uh, was he the youngest finals, youngest guy to ever start a finals or something like that? Maybe at the time, he was young. He was like twenty. How many games did he? Start he they in they that? inserted him in the starting lineup. I think at one yeah. point. Yeah, yeah, at one point for sure. Yeah. Oh, uh, that's that's a good point. Yeah, that was his rookie year, his best year. No, then he was definitely twenty. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. It says twenty here. Let's see. Jan- he was born on January twentieth. 2000. He's a big 22. A lot of 20s there is all I'm trying to say. <laughs> uh, yeah, so he was 20 because okay. that was 2020. Anyway, I got no problem yeah. with having no fans there. Yeah, having the digital boards where you see people's faces. <laughs> that was a weird time. I don't like remembering that part of it. No, that was weird. It was not having fans there and just them kind of cheering along. That part was weird. Did they do that for the finals? I can't remember. Yeah. I think so. That was weird. <laughs> yeah, man. It was a weird year. Yeah. Weird couple of years we had. That's true. All right. Uh, I think all of these are better than that one. So at number five, uh, Warriors over Cavs, 2015. Their first title, six-game series. Cavs up 2-1 in this series. It looked like LeBron was maybe going to pull off this upset over the Warriors, despite not having Kevin Love and Kyrie Irving, right? Those mm-hmm. guys are basically out. 
And this was the LeBron ISO after LeBron ISO after LeBron ISO slowing things down to a damn crawl, Mm -hmm. which made for like, uh, you know, an interesting dynamic of like, whoa, can this work? And it was working for a while, but then Golden State ripped off three straight wins. Curry, uh, a massive game six that I think gets forgotten. 37 points, he had seven threes. Um, Maybe gets forgotten because he doesn't win finals MVP. That goes to Andre Iguodala, who held LeBron to 36, 13, and 9 in the series. Mm-hmm. Iguodala did hit 14 three-pointers in the finals. He hit more than Klay Thompson. Pretty crazy. Yeah. You, know, you, know, you know, he had Curry hitting a ton. He hit 14 threes. Clay hit 12. I mean, who's the real splash brother there in that final? So, that, you know, that was a big reason why, too, that he got finals MVP. Yeah, he, he was did. contributing offensively. I guess the more surprising part to me is Clay should hit more threes. Yeah, that is, that is uh, weird, only right? 12, yeah. But this is an incredible series. It's a good series. W- when you broke it down there, just the fact that the Cleveland Cavaliers are up 2 1. Yeah. So you got a great series. The whole Matthew Delvadova is able to stop Steph, yeah, Steph yeah. Curry headlines, that kind of thing. But LeBron James, after losing Kyrie Irving in game one, right? Yep. That, was, that was fun. That was the o- overtime game. Uh, and L- Kevin Love out. LeBron James took this team to six games with the guys starting behind beside him. In Matthew Del Vadova, Iman Shumpert for part of it. Come Timothy- on, come on, come on. You give me it. For old times. Iman Schumper. <laughs> yes. It's been a while. Yeah. You still got it. I think so. Who else? Who else? Iman. Yeah, <laughs> no, no, you yeah, I like it. that. Anyways, yeah. <laughs> uh, Del Vadova was starting. Moskov was starting. Oh, yeah. Shumpert. Yeah, as I said. And Tristan Thompson. Those <laughs> those four guys. Wow. Those four guys. Uh, I thought JR was starting it times but i think they went the defense they said lebron's just no handle yeah, we, the ball it every was possession. it was Allen iverson 76ers yeah. i mean really it was with lebron playing the ai role and like let's just play you all you other dudes don't worry about it he's got us offensively mm-hmm. you just play defense and it it worked for a little bit but you couldn't yeah, uh, they're up to one couldn't hold down steve kerr and steph curry and clay and iggy and all those guys del vadova needed an iv he had to leave the game because he was just so gassed at guarding oh, the yeah. way he was guarding steph curry he was hosp- i believe he was hospitalized or at least in the back of the uh the state in the arena I, or something like he was needed some he liquids was, yeah he was done get and a fosta done. in him <laughs> Get that man a Fosta. What's that other Australian beer that that I always think Fosta is their biggest beer, but uh, it's not. It's uh, Victoria Bitter. The VB. VB. Yeah, I love yeah, that. I used to one. drink the hell out of that one. Uh, then there's another one. It's like, is it Four X or something like that? There's a lot of X's. A lot of X's. I forget. <laughs> uh, VB was uh, yeah the, the the beer of choice when I was working on the tree farm in Australia uh-huh. back in the day. Ever uh, have a Carlton Cold? I don't even know. Didn't have a lot of them anymore. Yeah. No, no. VB. It was a VB. Uh, yeah. Area. The stubbies. You got to love stubbies. the stubbies. Yeah, they're great. Yeah. Uh, all right. I had that at number five. Mm-hmm. I think some people are going to say, whoa, whoa, whoa. That seems a little too low on your list. Because this one at number four, I think, is the most polarizing. I know some of those other podcasts, like I talked about, that were doing this. Um, I know our guy, Will Lou. He had this, like, dead last. And that is Bucks over Suns, 2021. People either really hate this finals mm. or, like me, I, I thought it was pretty damn good. Uh, I'll make the case for it. It was a six-game series. The Suns were up 2-0. Obviously, the Bucks then won four straight. We had Chris Paul in his finals debut, dominating in it game one. He had a monster game one. Uh, we had a huge game four from Middleton. He scored 40 points. He had 10 straight down the stretch in that game. That was the game Giannis blocked uh, the alley-oop attempt by DeAndre Ayton, one of the greatest blocks in finals history. I I was just recently watching it. I did a playback where I went through the best blocks in finals history, some list that somebody had curated. Oh, my God, we were watching it. Like, just fire that up today. Do yourself a favor. It's unbelievable. Game five, uh, Milwaukee leading by one point with 16 seconds left. Drew Holiday steals the ball from Booker, throws the alley-oop to Giannis, and one. That secures that game. And then in game six, Giannis goes for 50 points, 14 boards. The guy's... Suddenly, like, uh, Jose Calderon from the free throw line, he goes 17 and 19. Insane. That was a big storyline throughout the postseason, even early in the in the, in the the finals about Giannis. Uh, he's not really good at the free throw line. Maybe that's where you can beat him. I thought this had a lot of, like, memorable performance. Yeah, Booker having monster games. Booker having really bad games. I thought this was a good series. With memorable plays, obviously a 
an a historic game six there from Giannis with the 50 point uh, performance. I, I don't know. I like this one. What about you? Oh, I love this one. I understand maybe for the casual fan, don't have two markets that you really <laughs> yeah. remember. I, I just aren't marquee. NBA markets. That made I it suppose. almost better though, because you were gonna have like a winner that hadn't won in either in Milwaukee's case in a very long time. Fifty. They, <laughs> yeah. It was it was pretty cool that they won it fifty years after the first one, and exactly fifty. Right. That's neat. Right. With back with the uh, you know Lou Alcindor days and, yeah. and Big O, and then or the Suns were gonna win their first one ever. I mean, you're right. Maybe there wasn't the fanfare behind there it. Wasn't. It was it was the post COVID year, though. I think we were back to f- basically. Full stadiums by the yeah. time we got to the final. So, yeah. No, no COVID problems here. Yanis Antetokounmpo <laughs> was awesome. He got injured in the conference finals. Oh, yeah. He got the hyper extended knee where it looked like it bent backwards. And game one of the NBA finals was a week later. Some people wondered. We all wondered, is Yanis going to come back? This dude was amazing in the NBA finals. You mentioned some of those plays, like the ridiculous block oh. on De- DeAndre It's Aiden. amazing. Yeah, it is amazing how he was able to trail and run back and recover for a huge block there's just so many plays and then for him to end it off in game six with a 50 point performance and then to sit on that uh, chair at the baseline and just soak it all in that was an incredible Giannis performance but they were also down 2-0 and it felt like yeah, the Suns could it's like, do oh this. my God, Chris Paul's going to do this. Yeah. Oh my God, Devin Booker has obviously, you know, taken to the next step in his superstardom. Um, yeah, and, the, and this franchise is finally going to do it. Oh my God, you know, they couldn't, you know, Barkley couldn't get past uh, Jordan's Bulls, and they had a chance way back in the day, and they're going to do it here. And, and Come on, ending the finals with was a great. fifty burger. How yeah. many players end a finals game? The, game six, the punctuation yeah. with a fifty burger. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, now the one, maybe one knock on this series and I, and I got to give credit to, uh, the hello and welcome podcast for reminding me of this because, uh, Jeff Teague recently was on a podcast, his podcast mm. saying like, uh, the post game celebration sucked. Oh yeah. <laughs> he said he just jumped in his truck and like drove to Indiana. <laughs> it's like nothing was going on. He's all bummed, <laughs> which is really weird. And then Gian- didn't Giannis go get like Chick-fil-A? Mm-hmm. Was that that night or the next day? I think he I got couldn't... 50 pieces 50 of pe- chicken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 50 nugs. <laughs> so maybe there wasn't I, I a cool party. There wasn't a cool party. I, yeah. I mean, I would be upset with that, but I also wouldn't be capable of playing like Giannis Tetacupo and winning it. And he, I guess he wanted, at the end of it all, like you don't want to party after game one, two, three, four, five. But at the end of all, I understand what Jeff Teague is saying Kelly. from his perspective. On a team where he wasn't a huge part of that team, he was just he was just there for the run. The team basically didn't play in that series. If I, I don't remember. think he played a lot. No, no. no. Um, so he wanted to party. <laughs> well, these guys were too they were too like old and mature. Yeah, you had your uh, I mean they're not that old, but your Drew Holiday obviously winning his first chip. Middleton, like I said, who had a pretty good series. Uh, Eric Bledsoe, Brooke, of course. Uh, uh, Brooke Lopez. Yeah, they went they went to hang out in Greece and and. Mm. It, it, in different ways, and like later, 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 later. Eric. But but I, they I remember. To rest. I remember some videos of Eric Bledsoe hanging with Yanis Antetokounmpo. Okay, okay. But I understand Jeff. T. I thought it was a good finals. So we just said it. Interested was. to hear there's no, there's what no people debate. think. There's no debate. I got great. it at number four. Okay, number three. Uh, Raptors over Warriors, 2019. Not I, bad. I went back and forth between uh, being a runner up on this list or the number three spot here, which I'm going with. Six game series. Now look. The reason I ultimately put it down to number three was KD not playing until he returned in game five and then tore his Achilles after playing, what, like 11 minutes. That was unfortunate. Uh, and then, you know, you had Clay Thompson getting injured in game six. Yeah. <laughs> Which is, you know, sort of gets overlooked because maybe of the, the KD injury. He tore his ACL in the second half of game six. So those that really sucks. I mean, look, I'm a Raptors fan. We're Raptors fans. We were ecstatic. They finally won a championship. It was amazing. It was our last year with the starters. It was surreal. I was in Toronto and got to celebrate all night long in the city uh, when they won. But, you know, that hampers it a little bit. Basketball was awesome, though. The basketball was awesome. Four of the six games decided by seven points or less. I think three of them by even, like, less than that. There were close games. And... It was a good series, I think, overall, in terms of the basketball. It was they, a good series. I mean, all of Canada was into it. I'm sure Americans have a different opinion about it, but it was still good basketball. Yes. I think I'd put Bucks Suns over... This one? This one. Yeah. 
these are close games, man. The fact that Kevin Durant was out, obviously, big part. Clay Thompson also was injured. He missed game three because oh, of it. He got yeah. injured in game two and had to walk off. Danny Green. I forget that. Danny Green got him on that dunk attempt. Was that the game later in the series? And But Clay Thompson was... I thought that's how he like got injured. Got injured, injured. injured. Yeah, you're right. Six. And he came back for the free throws. Yes. But he did miss game three, and that's where the box and one was invented. Just go right. after Steph. No Clay on the floor. No Kevin Durant on the floor. It's deflating. I was there when Kevin Durant got injured. Um, yeah, we were there. Yeah, yeah. Game five. When everybody in that arena, outside of us, because we were like, it ain't over. That place thought the Raptors were winning the championship that night. Mm-hmm. Remember, like, final couple minutes? Oh, yeah. They took, like, what was it, up 8-0 or something like that? Or up 8, like, late. Mm-hmm. And then, like, oh, here come the Splash Brothers, start banging threes, and suddenly they steal that game, mm-hmm. despite the injury to KD. It yeah. was like, oh, God. That was incredible, though. That was a, yeah. it, that was a wild game. I'm saying, the injury, no one wants to see any superstar get injured, but, like, it's memorable because of those injuries, unfortunately. It sure Him is. Him coming back and trying to play. Yeah. And the Raptors' top seven guys were elite. Lowry first, the game six to start that. That punctuation was amazing. Mm-hmm. But Lowry, Green, Kawhi, Siakam, Gasol, Van Vliet, and Ibaka. Like, those seven were the guys that basically played all the minutes. There were spot minutes here. It was an incredible. Powell. Yeah. And it was, yeah, Norman Powell didn't play a lot. No, no. It was those seven After guys. After being great yeah. uh, with the Raptors and helping win some series, it was just an incredible team performance. It's totally true. And Drake was good uh you just made me flash back game one just just being able to do what they did um yeah yeah because golden state stole it stole game one and i thought did did they they not or am i backwards the raptors won three games on the road oh i got it backwards Yeah, Yeah. yeah for the for the raptors to be able to to win they won game one yeah um what a wild series. Yeah, I just had a flash bash uh, of watching Kevin Durant warm up in that game. And he looked, oh, this uh, this guy's back. Right, he looks, right, he right. looks good. And in the first quarter, he hit three threes just because he looked so great. And then for him to go down uh, was obviously deflating. And then they were still able to win that game. I know. Uh, they were, I'm saying. They were, it's crazy. It was the weird Nick Nurse calling a timeout up five with two and a half minutes left with the ball. Why are you, why are you calling timeout? You just took the air out of the Raptors yeah. uh, and they lost that game but to go into Golden State was wild in game six how they were able to do that Kyle Lowry was a monster to start that game I'm going to give you sort of like and I shouldn't have done this but it's impossible to like remove it from it the 2019 playoffs were pretty damn incredible too like they were really good you had you had Damian Lillard with the walk off in the first round against the Thunder the bye bye mm. uh, the Paul like over Paul George and you had the Kawhi shot of course and you had the Raptors coming back against the Bucks. They were also down 2-0 in that. Yeah, it was like it was like a magical run, of course. And this was the the Kawhi hired gun of it all. And it just I can't still believe to this day that it happened. So that's why I got it at number three. But at number two, I've got Warriors over Celtics. 2023 six game series i believe it's going to be the warriors sort of last dance i don't think they're going to win another championship with their their current sort of structure we may not even have them next year playing together the two splash brothers and draymond but uh this one game one of that series steph had 21 points in the first quarter (laughs) but the celtics caught fire in the fourth al horford was a monster Derek white was a monster off the bench and they pulled out the victory they were up 2-1 and we're looking like the Celtics were going to win this title here yeah. with those Jays. But in game four, Curry said, uh-uh, 43 points. He had 10 boards as well, and he evened the series at two games apiece. Then you had Wiggins in game five. He was the second best Warriors player the entire finals. Um, difference maker in game five for sure. They won that game despite shooting 9 of 40 from deep somehow. And then in game six, took care of business. But that was a good finals. I think a part of it is like Curry getting his first finals MVP. And a lot of people just didn't see this happening after the two years prior where a bunch of injuries sort of had them out of the postseason completely. I'm fine putting it at number two because this was Steph Curry's show. This was the yeah. Steph Curry show. Yeah. He needed it for his legacy. and Not that he needed it personally, but for every casual basketball fan to have this as his coronation. Yeah. Big after 15 it was a little bit different with the the Cavs, all their injuries, and then Durant, Durant, Durant times two. The Warriors didn't have one. 
Uh, obviously, we'll we'll get to the the 2016 in between. They <laughs> they weren't able to to pull it out in 2019 against the Raptors. No, Clay was a big part of that for sure. He needed one, and this was his. So it's great for his resume. Good series. Yeah. And at number one, process of elimination, you know what it is. It's not really a surprise. It's Cavs over Warriors in 2016, the only seven-game series in the finals from the past decade. And the drama really started in uh, game four, I guess, with Draymond Green punching LeBron in the dick and (laughs) getting suspended after he was assessed a flagrant foul by the league, and that gave him the flagrant foul point total that triggered the automatic suspension, so there was no Draymond Green for Game 5. It didn't matter. It didn't feel like it mattered all that much. They were up 3-1. Mm-hmm. I remember the debate was like, uh, where's Draymond Green going to watch the game? Remember that? No. Where's he going to be? He couldn't be <laughs> in the arena. There was oh. a whole thing. So it was like, where's he going to be? Where's he going to be? And they had him, uh, I want to say he was like, Oh, no, he was going to go watch it at the Oakland Athletics like stadium, I think, or something like that. Oh, with there all was the talk fans? Of, yeah, there was talk of that, but anyway. I was in Golden State. You were there. Well, yeah, I was covering. there for that game, and I thought, this is no problem that he's missing a game here right. when they're up 3-1. It just didn't feel like there was any chance for that other team to be able to overcome a 3-1 deficit. The dynamic duo of Cleveland torched Golden State in the final Three games. Yes. You had Kyrie with 40-point efforts in games five and seven. You had LeBron scoring 40-plus points in games five and six. LeBron had the triple-double in game seven. And, of course, game seven has three things that are called uh, the block, the shot, and the stop. Mm. Obviously, LeBron chased down on Iguodala, Kyrie with the three-pointer. I guess I have those in the wrong order there. Do I have those in the wrong order? I can't remember. Mm. Uh, and then the stop there, Kevin Love sort of uh, containing Steph Curry. Yeah, there's memorable stuff there. And then, hell, you start our podcast. Uh, you know, basically when I say alongside me is always Tess Mellis, you'd give a podcast listeners, this one's for you. Cleveland, this one's for you. Uh, yes, Off yes, of LeBron. yes, yes. It, it marked a kept promise from LeBron to bring a championship to Cleveland. It really vaulted him into the greatest of all time sort of argument. You know, this one Mm -hmm. specifically, and then he would add another one with the Lakers in the ball, but this one, I'm like, whoa, okay. Mm -hmm. You can't beat this finals. Number one with a bullet. I'm good with it. Okay. It is wild to think about LeBron's career when it all is said and done, goes away from Cleveland, is in Miami, wins a couple, then comes back for this. I know. A a 3-1 deficit. And then, you know, he goes on to win with the Lakers, but this is the one that you remember. Yeah, this is the one that everybody, even at the time, is like, this one feels like it's like worth two or three championships. <laughs> yeah, it totally feels that way. And and that's what the conversation about right now was, that's why Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum is great for them to stay in Boston because if Kevin Durant was able to do it in OKC, how much would have that title meant? Sure, uh, I sure. get it. That's, it means more. Yeah, it does. It, it does mean does. two or three. It, 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 yeah, it equals three. <laughs> this one three championships jeez uh, so it, what do you it, mean you got him tied with Jordan then <laughs> the math is right you got three oh, other ones six. and if you count this one as three then he's tied with Jordan yeah sure oh, there you go there's your yeah. goat debate okay so ranking the last 10 NBA finals number 10 Warriors defeat the Cavs 4-1 in 2017 at number 9 the Celtics defeat the Mavs here in 2024 in 5 games at number 8 Nuggets beating the Heat in 5 games in 2023 at number 7 the Warriors defeating the Cavs in a sweep back in 2018 but we did have that funny game one, the J.R. Smith meme. Uh, at number six, Lakers beating the Heat in six games in the bubble in 2020. Number five, Warriors beating the Cavs in six in 2015. Number four, Bucks beating the Suns. Don't forget about that finals in six games in 2021. At number three, Toronto Raptors beating the Warriors in six in 2019. Number two, Warriors beat the Celtics 4-2 in 2022. And number one, the best finals from the past 10 years, Cavs beating the Warriors in a seven-game series, coming back from 3-1 in 2016. So, not too many issues with my list. No, no. A couple little spots you might tweak a bit. Yeah. That's fine. That's totally I can, fine. I can live with that. And just uh, for a little note here on Draymond Green missing Game 5 in that series, Trey wrote that Draymond watched Game 5 in A's box. Oh, so he was in the Oakland A's box. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. 